when a company is starting out, usually companies are not very cash rich. The cash component of compensation is not going to be great. So one very important tool that startups can leverage on is to have a universal ESOP policy. You know, that's something we did from day one. We made sure every single person who joined the company, no matter what position or designation, had a reasonable number of ESOP. We also made sure that uh, ESOP values were communicated to employees. You know, a lot of people who ma- who have not worked for startups previously may not understand exactly how ESOP worked. So communicating that value and then making them feel uh, kind of co-owner in the business, I think was very important. You know, that way the interests were aligned. There was a upside for early employees and that's exactly how it panned out. You know, a lot of people who joined us early days after you know, a few years when they left, they were able to cash out their stock options and got uh, reasonably rewarded you know, for the early hard work they did. So I think you know, it's a very, very important tool for startups. You know, I, again, looking back at my experience in various startups in Bay Area, uh, it's a universal policy that most startups uh, uh, follow and because of uh, stock options, they are able to attract the best talent uh, in the industry, even a better talent than compared to big companies in Silicon Valley. So I will highly recommend you know, most entrepreneurs to consider a universal ESA policy, especially in the early days. Just a few things, you know, the uh, when the stock option is given, your paperwork has to be very clean. Uh, in the early days, your know, number of shares, uh, stock pricing, etc., may not have been done by a professional. If those things are not being thought of properly, it can lead to a lot of confusion. For example, you know, you may starting out with say 5, uh, 500,000 total shares, and you're given somebody 10,000 shares, and later on, if the stock was split one is to 10 as part of your series A, which is something that happened in our case, that 10,000 shares for that person become 100,000. Uh, sometimes you know, entrepreneurs communicate that 0.5% equity, but they don't explain the dilution to. So when the future round happens, the employee thinks, you know, I was promised 0.5%, but as every single uh, additional round happens at 0.5, may become 0.3 or 0.2. So I think just getting all the basics right, you know, working with a professional accountant, uh, getting proper ESOP policies. Also, you know, uh, coming things like when can people exercise options, what the exercise price is going to be, what the locking period will be, so that there are no surprises. I think, you know, not clarifying any of these things leaves a lot of things open for interpretation and later on can cause, you know, conflicts which are totally avoidable.